Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soul scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about the deep mulch method. And this is by high demand. Some people wanted me to review this whole concept, who originally made it, and the science behind whether or not it works. So let's just dive straight into the details and uh, look at deep mulch and see if it'll work in your garden. As always with gardening methods, I only do these videos to give you the tools to determine whether or not it's going to work for you or whether or not a hybrid of this is going to work for you. So I give you both the pros and I give you the cons. I do not care what you decide to do and don't take this personally. If you use the deep mulch method, that's great, awesome. I don't really, I, I just don't, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I'm just laying it out there the way it is. Okay, so the initial method was made by Ruth Stout. She first laid out the concept of deep mulch gardening in her 1950s book. The book was called Gardening Without the Work for the Aging, the Busy, and the Indolent. So that was what the concept was made from. She claims that there's no tillage, there's no weeds, there's no fertilizer needed, and there's actually no watering either. It is a completely soilless mixture. So it is essentially a huge range of organic material that is then dumped onto the surface of the soil. It can consist of wood chips, straw, compost, manure, old crop material, and it can range anywhere from eight to 24 inches in depth. So if you do do the deep mulch method, please comment down below what combination of ingredients you enjoy using um, and exactly why you enjoy that combination. In her book, she recommends waiting one year. So basically set up your deep mulch method in the yard, but you have to let it sit for a year. And I think what her logic behind that is, is that she wants the wood, especially if there's wood chips or bark mixed into the mix, she wants it to sit there and rot for a year, which I can understand because wood chips do tend to sequester nutrients away from the plant, especially in their infancy, if they're very new, fresh wood chips, can take anywhere from two to three years before they are completely neutralized and therefore actually work within the soil system rather than acting like a battery, trying to soak all of it up and keep it to itself. It's actually the microbes that are doing the sucking of the nutrients and using that to decompose the mulch or the wood matter more so than the wood itself. Hello, future editing Ashley here. So one of the things I forgot to mention was that mulch that's not incorporated into the soil is not an issue. So mulch that you use to mulch your garden with is not a problem because it actually only affects that top inch or two of soil where there isn't a lot of right root biomass. It isn't until you incorporate it into the soil or use it as a soilless medium, such as what we're doing with deep mulch, that it can affect the nitrogen or just any sort of nutrient content. Okay, let's get back to regular programming. I do enjoy how clean it looks, and I also enjoy how easy it would be to actually garden in this scenario. So because it would be so light and fluffy, it really is the ultimate way to garden without the back-breaking work of digging or tilling soil. Nutrient-wise, I do think it would be very similar to the doubting no digs garden, especially if we were very heavy on the compost or the manure side. But if we did an equal mix of bark and wood chips to the manure compost, say like a 50-50 or something like that, you may not end up with as much nutrient runoff and you may end up actually more balanced, especially if we add in things like straw and stuff of that nature. If you don't know what I'm talking about, be sure to check out my other videos on doubting or even on the hugaculture. Uh, method that I review, those will give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. Some of the common issues that may come with this deep mulch, mulch method is actually critters. Because it is so light and fluffy, we may end up with some things finding a home in your pile. This could mean slugs or snails, but if you use things like hay or straw, it actually may mean mice, rats, and voles. Again, depending on the mix you use and the ratios in which you use it. In some zones, it actually may act as a possible heat sink 
which may work for the lower zones. Um, it may have more of a heating pile. So you may end up with the thaw being relieved from that mound earlier in the year. And therefore you actually may be able to get into the garden sooner in the year in order to start your garden because the roots will be nice and warm. The seeds will be nice and warm. However, in uh, zones that are higher up or warmer zones, what may end up happening is you may end up with it being a little bit too hot and you may end up burning your roots. So keep that in mind because this is basically a giant row or mound of compost that's not being rotated. The heat could factor into some issues, again, depending on your area. If you decide to use this method and you say you do a 50-50 manure, hay, comp or wood chip type mix, you actually will probably notice some pretty miraculous results in that first year because you have so much bioavailable nutrients in the system and they actually might see really good results for even three, four, five years after that. You do have to keep in mind that there is some maintenance you have to do to this. So you do need to add to it, especially as you see things degrading and coming down. But as you build on it more and more year after year, you're going to notice better results. Microbially, if you have enough water in the system, it's going to be very microbially diverse. So if you start seeing things like mushrooms and stuff popping up, that is okay. That it would be very normal in the system and something that you would expect. Obviously, as always with any of these no dig piling on the biomass type garden systems, you don't want to use any foliage that may have powdery mildew or any sort of issue from the year before because it will harbor in that foliage and then you're just reapplying it and then it'll just be a nightmare year after year. It will compound over time. But overall, I think it's a really great method, especially if you have a heavy clay soil or if you have a very uh, sandy soil. This is both ideal and each situation. For the sandy soil, it's ideal because it will hold on to moisture. And for the clay scenario, it's actually ideal because it will allow the roots to penetrate and it will prevent the uh, roots from becoming anaerobic or being in an anaerobic environment. Overall, the deep mulch method I think would work in various different scenarios. And I think if you wanna give it a shot, you should. I do like this more than a full blown compost or a full blown degraded manure type setup, mostly because I don't think you would end up with as much nutrient loss based on the amount of carbon or non-decomposed amendments that are in the pile itself as well, such as straw and bark and all that sort of stuff. All those things are going to help to hold on to nutrients rather than letting it being leached out and then into the waterways. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!